Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tucker and Crowley Report, part of News Now and the Belmont Journal. I'm joined by Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian, and I am Mike Crowley. Before we get started today, we have a couple of announcements. Franklin, let's start with you. Sure, the, uh, the Belmont Historical Society invites everyone in town um, uh, to a centennial celebration in Belmont in 1923. Um, and that's going to be on Tuesday, May 9th, at the Beach Street Center between uh, 1.15 and 2.30. Um, uh, they say they're going to transport the audience uh, like in a time machine, going back 100 years ago to discover what everyday life was like in Belmont in 1923. So they're bringing back the uh, the trams? Yeah, and, and the pre-polio uh, <laughs> pre <-polio laughs> vaccine. Yeah. All, right. All right. So... Also, another announcement, the Belmont Historical Society invites you to take a walking tour along Pleasant Street. This is Saturday, April 29th from 2 to 4 p.m. Participants will meet at the corner of Pleasant Street and Stella Road. So if you're interested in historical architecture in Belmont, this could be something that you'd be interested in and want to check out. All right. So, Franklin, let's talk about news. What's happening this week? Well, what's happening last week? All right, all right. Uh, what's well, well, in, uh, we had a uh, a surprise windfall for the town of about oh, about nine hundred thousand uh, dollars, and and that's important because there's a lot of um, um, items um, uh, that need um, that could use funding uh, in the town before the end of the uh, fiscal year. I now, what happened? I can think of some, Franklin. You bet. <laughs> Former school committee member. Um, so what happened is that uh, this goes back to the controversial fuel tanks. Okay. You know, uh, the, they're um, and this is at the DPW yard, right? And uh, so since uh, the town has decided uh, that it wants uh, in-ground tanks rather than the equally safe and more and least expensive above ground, <laughs> so what what uh, the uh, town has and would need to do is because the um, the, uh, the the uh, practical life for these tanks are well over. It's been many years since they've been. Then they should have been replaced. So right. they're getting replaced. Uh, the estimate that uh, the town put in its books for a replacement was one point nine million dollars. And um, as uh, Jay Marcotte, the head of the uh, DPW, said, um, this firm from Franklin, uh, Massachusetts, Greenside Services, hit it out of the ballpark and basically. They said they can do it for nine hundred ninety-six thousand dollars. So there's a windfall of about nine hundred thousand dollars that is now going that that should be spent uh, during this fiscal year, which be June thirtieth. There's a lot of things that the school that that Trees Garvin and, and the select board can do with this money. Um, you know, one thing that people have talked about is um, you know put in you know if uh, since we're trying to compile as much free cash as we can. Why don't you just put in free cash and it'll roll over till next year? Uh, yeah. But and there's a lot there... of there's a lot of other things that the uh, town could talk about, uh, like what what in the schools? What's the what's the situation right now at the schools? Well, so the school system is running a deficit this fiscal year, and has... this is fiscal year twenty three. Right, mm -hmm. right, and they've curtailed spending. the 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 deficit was something in the neighborhood of of 900,000, um, a little bit more than that. But um, the expectation was that they could address some of that with um, spending cuts, uh, supplies, um, you know, if someone leaves, you don't hire a replacement, um, except for critical, you know, absolutely critical positions. And and then where the, the remaining balance of, you know, it, it could be 500,000, it could be a bit more, was supposed to come from, um, you know, there there was speculation that that they might ask the for for use of the warrant committee's emergency reserve, mm -hmm. which is four hundred and fifty thousand. But you know, this this is a potential way to to address you know either all of that or some of that. And uh, of course, we're and, and uh, I think it's very important for people to realize that uh, we'll get a better picture of what's uh, happening over at the schools um, uh, when the uh, uh, I guess the school committee is held holding a. Um, uh, at their next meeting, they'll be talking about the budget. Right. And I believe that's, you know, that discussion will be focused on the fiscal 24 budget. Right. And um, so they'll be talking about uh, various options. Uh, you know, there are a lot of parents and, and, and school committee members that are, are, are still 
concerned about the, um, the, the, the layoffs of, of a number of teachers and, and classroom aides. Um, and especially those kindergarten uh, aides. Yeah, especially the kindergarten aides. And, you know, my understanding <laughs> is that, you know, there will be some options discussed at that meeting to mitigate some of that. But, um, but we won't know till we till we see. That's right. And I think that really, um, I think still there's going to be a, a contention about, you know, where, how the funding is going to be done. I think there's a, uh, a large, there's a growing group in town that wants to protect those uh, kindergarten um, uh, uh, paralegals. No, that's and absolutely. They, and, and, you know, we've heard. Para paraprofessionals. Paraprofessionals. And what we, we, we heard uh, is that uh, it's, uh, you know, if, if, if a re resolution can't be made by the time we go to town meeting in uh, June, uh, when segment B comes, the, the budget section, right. we could maybe see a challenge to the to um, um, the actual budget, and that's something that you know, uh, I don't think anybody really wants to see because okay. that you know, opens up Pandora's box when it comes out finances. Well, well, let me ask. Let me ask. Um, are there you know any other things that are on the table with respect to this potential windfall that we're having this year? No, um, we don't. Um, it can you know it, it, it. Well, I asked Patrice Garvin uh, after the meeting, you know. What what's her thoughts? You know, where where would she like to put this? Because there's a lot of angles that uh, she can use. She just smiled and said, "Look, I'm not going to tell you until I tell the board what my ideas are." Yeah. So we'll find out soon. All right. So stay tuned for that. Um, so let's talk about the Boston Marathon. We had a number of Belmont runners. That's right. We had a great number of Belmont runners. It was a great day for. To, uh, for uh, 29 uh, Belmont runners who finished the marathon, and. Uh, all 29 finished? Well, there was like 33, 34. And you, okay. you know, there's some times when people just go like, mm, I'm not going to run today. <laughs> this is too long. Uh, but uh, what we had is um, uh, one of the Belmont uh, runners uh, had a, uh, was uh, featured in many of the newscasts because she um, uh, was the coach. Oh, well, her name is Becca PC, of course. You know, oh. our, she's Belmont's uh, marathon runner extraordinaire. Um, and uh, she uh, she actually won twice the uh, the uh, World Marathon Challenge, which is running a marathon in seven consecutive days on seven continents. You know, crazy. <laughs> and but she's won it. She's a great marathon. She's a great runner, and she's also a coach. Uh -huh. and, uh, so um, when we when uh, I guess when the Boston Marathon heard that uh, Zidane Ochara, uh, Chara, not Ochara, but Chara. <laughs> He's uh, he's from Slovenia or Czechoslovakia, um, and a 14-year uh, Belmont Bruin uh, captain. Mm -hmm. uh, he was going to run. Uh, they said, you know, uh, let's let's connect her, him up with uh, one of the, one of the run, you know, one, a good runner and a, a, and a coach, and that was Becca Pizzi. And, and uh, people were praising her, saying, you know, the reason he's uh, earned his way onto the to the, uh, the the Boston Marathon was because of Becca. And so when he was crossing the finish line. He actually was running up and grabbing uh, Becca's hand and raising it above as they were crossing oh, the finish great. line. It was very nice. Yeah, you know, it's some uh, really great runners. Our, our uh, fastest runner was Brian Harvey. Uh, um, uh, he ran it in two hours and twenty two minutes. You know, I think he I think he finished forty uh, seventh. Okay, that's, that's, that's very not bad. Good, very good time. And um, you know, we've had uh, a lot of people. We had uh, Will Brownsberger. Uh, our state senator, four hours, 22 minutes, and 54 seconds. Not bad for a guy in his late 60s. <laughs> and uh, um, um, uh, Lisa Engler uh, was the fastest woman uh, from Belmont, and she ran in three hours, 36 minutes, and 22 seconds, two minutes faster than Becca. And, Buck and Becca was, was hauling along a, a six foot nine <laughs> former hockey player. So give her, give her that. And it was a great scene because you know Beck is five foot two and he's six foot. Nine. <laughs> so it was a pretty pretty great scene at the at the marathon finish. All right, I wish I'd been there. So um, let's talk. Let's talk. Uh, let's let's get an update on on local sports. Yeah, um, uh, what we're seeing uh, in uh, local high school sports is that uh, let's uh, focus on the lacrosse teams, uh, Belmont. Um, uh, uh, Belmont's boys are five and two. That's their best start in mm -hmm. a very, very long time. And um, um, they look really uh, great. I mean, what, what, on this week, they 
they actually held another team, another Division One team, to no goals. And that's very, very unusual in, in, in lacrosse. They won 14 nothing over Tewksbury. And the reason that they won that is because uh, the person who takes, if you, if you know lacrosse, mm -hmm. after every goal, you basically have tip-off. You know, you have two guys, two, two players will then fight for the ball and whoever gets it, gets it. Well, Belmont has two very extraordinarily good centermen, you know, and uh, they just basically won all the all the draws, so the other team had no chance to score. And uh, they, they're, they're turning out to be a very good, accomplished team, but they're also going to go between before the Middlesex League teams, which are some of the best in the state. Mm -hmm. uh, the girls team are 3-0, and um, and uh, they're also looking very sharp. Um, you know, um, and we're seeing also some uh, good work by the boys tennis and um, uh, baseball is always uh, uh, going to be a bit of a struggle because you're, you don't have any, you don't have a home field, but next year we will have a brand new field. So okay. that's going to be great. Um, well, also one thing that we, when, if you've gone to any of the uh, games over at Harris Field or in that area, you're, you're also seeing uh, some of the changes that are happening over at um, at the uh, at the high school, and uh, we're seeing well, let's, uh, the let's land. talk about those. Yeah, uh, let's talk about what's happening over the high school. Uh, some of the last, um, of, of some of the first landscaping uh, is actually coming in this spring, and that is uh, uh, they're going they're um, uh, going to uh, get rid of the uh, very convenient and <laughs> very convenient parking lot that was out front. And that's going to be, uh, uh, and so we're going to lose about 100 spaces. So there's no replacement for those spaces. None. Exactly. And everyone should, uh, and people should start to realize, um, uh, by uh, September, when we begin the school year, we're going to have two major construction projects that are going to be across the street from each other. Right, so you're going to have you're lots of... rink, and you're going to have the library. And they're just a quarter mile, less than a quarter mile from the high school. They're going to take away a lot of spaces. You know, well, you know, we're going to find out, you know, how can how uh, congenial people are about having cars in their neighborhood because there's going to you're going to have to park it somewhere, and and the parking lot that is proposed for the back of the school won't be built by September. You know, so it, it will be built a little later because they, they want to open the building, and that's the last. Thing. So, so so basically, we're replacing. So you know, the, there's that that. Uh, there's that song by Joni Mitchell, you know, you, you put up a parking lot, you, you, you pay paradise, put up a parking lot. Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting rid of a parking lot and putting up trees. Uh. But it won't be paradise on Concord Avenue. Things will be a little bit congested for a, a number little, of months. Oh yeah, a little. <laughs> for months, about a year, more, more than a year. All right, well, we'll see how that plays out. <laughs> Thank you, Franklin. And you can see more of Franklin's reporting at Belmontonian.com. Be sure to check in with us next time and we'll see you then.